was young until now, it's always felt like my basketball journey has been an uphill climb. I've had doubts about where basketball would take me so many times in my career. There are multiple times that I wanted to quit when I was younger. There are many times when I didn't think I'd make it to the next level, even at the professional level. I really struggled with confidence and uh, even just dealing with people looking at me uh, for being Asian and some of the things they would say to me. When you have somebody bringing negative energy towards you, it's a fork in the road. You do two things. You either let it destroy you and you go down, or you take that energy, you turn it into something positive and you motivate yourself and you allow yourself to focus and it can take you to the other trajectory. You know, it's uh, a lot of, uh, it's, it's a very wealthy city, um, but for me and my family, we, uh, I don't want to say that we didn't have anything, but uh, we definitely couldn't compare to uh, the majority of the people living here. And so um, my parents did a great job of, I mean, they sacrificed everything and used um, all of their salary and then some to be able to uh, give us a chance to live here so that we could attend the best school. He always very passionate about basketball. What that means, sports. When he was little, like five years old, and so we just let him do whatever, only if he finished his homework. And because he loved basketball so much, so he's you know he's he's willing to to quickly finish homework or do extra you know so he can play basketball. So I'm not the tiger mom. It's he loved basketball, so he want to do his homework. Just driving through these streets, for me, it's so peaceful. Um, you know, me and my brothers, we used to run or bike or do whatever, and we'd go to the nearest place with, with a court. And so, you know, we would, we would hoop at Palo Verde. We would hoop at Don Jesus Ramos Park down there. We would hoop at two other elementary schools nearby. We would hoop at the YMCA. I mean, with our bikes, we felt like we were unstoppable. <laughs> Palo Verde Elementary School uh, in Northern California. My house is right down the street, and uh, all my basketball dreams started here. Uh, we would come, me, my brother, uh, my older brother, my little brother, my dad, we would come here every day, and we would just play for hours. I mean, we could actually be here sometimes just hooping for four, five, six hours. Um, and uh, yeah, it's, it's amazing to be back. It, it, it reminds me of where it all started. My most important game for sure is the state championship game and uh, even thinking back to it brings chills just the way that it happened um, how everybody was counting us out and I just and I remember that the week leading up to the game everyone on campus was like man how are you gonna beat these guys are you gonna be able to win like do you guys even have a chance and I got so annoyed with everybody by the end, I was like, man, just stop talking to me. Just come to the game and watch. And uh, it, was, it was just this, this feeling of nobody believed except for our team. Uh, no one, even on our own campus, believed that we had a chance. So even after winning California Player of the Year and winning the state championship, uh, I ended up with zero scholarship offers and the reality is I couldn't even get some division three basketball teams to look at me and so I was really really I mean grinding like I was making my my own highlight tape printing them out 
and then mailing them to, to different schools and coaches, hoping that somebody would call me back. Um, yeah, that was, that was a grind. I always felt like to earn somebody's respect or to have somebody believe in me, I would have to prove myself three, four, five times. I had to do it more than anybody else. But for somebody to lose faith in me or to think that I wasn't good enough, all it took was one bad game. And that has uh, been very fatiguing at times and discouraging, but um, also seeing the breakthroughs along the way and having great people behind me has made it so that I can keep carrying on and, and, and climbing. People always ask me, you know, oh, who, who's the greatest uh, person you had to guard or who's your toughest opponent? And really the biggest thing and how I'd answer that is the toughest opponent has always been myself because there's so many things in my life that I can block myself from doing if I give up, if I give less effort, if I don't believe in myself. I mean, opponents will come and go, teams will come and go, leagues will come and go, but at the end of the day, when you play for a long time or when you really pursue your dreams, the biggest person that can stop you is yourself. The biggest person that, that can help you get there is also yourself. The one thing I always told myself, I was like, I'll do anything I can to avoid being in a cubicle and stuck at a desk and a computer. And, and that gave me such a deeper appreciation for the game and, and it shaped a lot of how I view you know professional basketball. It's like, dude, I get to wake up and play basketball as a job. Now I get to go to the gym and do what I love. And uh, man, it's, it's such, a, such a blessing. My fondest memory so far on the court, um, I grew up here in the Bay Area, and uh, so I was a Warriors fan. And, and when I was playing for New York during the Insanity, um, you know, we played a lot of teams, but the one against the Lakers, it means a lot because there's a Northern California, Southern California rivalry. And so when we played against the Lakers and we had all that buzz um, and, and, and everyone's talking about the game, um, the shot that I hit in the corner, you know, and, and I've said this in the sense that I've never, I will never feel this feeling again. After I hit that shot that was a backbreaker from the corner in the fourth quarter, it felt like the first time ever and, and I've never experienced it since, is that it literally felt like I was hovering off the ground. Like that's how loud the arena was. It was so loud, it literally felt like I was hovering. And I, and I remember I, I even looked down and I was like, what is going on? I looked at my feet to see what was, what was happening. Like for me, as long as I have that talent and I have that desire, I want to give 100% and just go for it. And uh, you know, the game has brought me to my knees so many times, so many times, and, uh, and, and God always gives me the strength to get back up. And I, I, the reason why I keep saying that is because it's not, I can't sit here and honestly look somebody in the eye and tell them that it's, it's been me every single time, that I found the strength within myself. Um, I, I couldn't say that. Um, and so I know a lot of that comes from faith and anything else, it usually just comes from family and my close friends. That the fulfillment of proving somebody wrong is very fleeting, very empty. And uh, I started to realize that actually the game of basketball and sports in general is, is, is beauty, it's a luxury, um, and, and the game is meant to be played through love versus coming from a place of hatred or vengeance or, or anger. And uh, I think when I was able to flip that switch uh, it really allowed me to realize that it doesn't matter what's going to happen because every single player from the worst to the greatest always had haters. Um, but at the end of the day, you have to find something that, you know, you have to find a, a foundation of love to kind of go off of. I genuinely believe the best is yet to come. I've had so many of my amazing opportunities taken away through extenuating circumstances, but uh, right now, I still have more opportunities and I still have tomorrow and I still have this next season. And so uh, my goal is to prepare and, and come out and just uh, dominate. And, and, you know, I'm coming in with this nothing will stop me mentality. Um, and, and that's just something that, you know, every single player should have. And, and for me, I, I definitely want to embody that. And 
I guess now with the kicks, I mean, that's everything that, you know, I, for me it's so personal. Like when I think about these shoes, I, I literally think of that, that nothing will stop me. And so when I have those shoes and every time I look down on them, it's a great reminder to me of all the ups and downs in my career, but that it's all about continuing to go forward. And, uh, and my goal right now is you know, I'm chasing this. I want to be the best version of myself um, as a basketball player and as a human. Uh, I want to be the best version of myself. And when it's all said and done, I don't want to look back and say, oh man, I regret this or I wish I gave more.